Hello, Lake Grove Church. Welcome to our next installment of our video devotional series for Lent. My name is Matt Heisler, and I am the Director of Ministry with Youth and Their Families here at Lake Grove. Our scriptural reading today is from Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6. Let's read it together. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and defense. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I recently adopted a fish, thanks to a high schooler who will be going away to college and needed to consolidate her fish collection. When I brought the fish home, our two-year-old promptly named him Marmalade, which is a funny name. I bought a five-gallon tank for Marmalade and put him in it. The truth is, he looked pretty immediately uncomfortable in the empty tank. He limply swam around, refused to eat his food, and started acting sick. I was quickly learning that fish need shelter. They need shadows they can hide in. Open water can feel dangerous and vulnerable to a fish. So I went out and I bought some gravel to put along the floor of the tank. I bought some plants and Marmalade's favorite, an underwater hut with windows and a door he can swim in and out of. After I put these things in the tank, Marmalade quickly felt at home, swimming in and out of the plants and hiding himself in the shadows of the hut, even looking out at me through a window, which of course I snapped a picture of and sent to my wife. As children, we have paradoxical relationships with darkness and shadows. They are the home of some of our deepest fears. We imagine what terrible monsters might be creeping in the basement or in the darkness under our beds or concealed in the closet at night. Yet as children, we also hide under the covers in darkness. We create secret worlds in attics or closets and we run to hide ourselves under the protection of a parent or loved one when we feel threatened or hurt. As adults, we may feel like we've outgrown the need for hiding places. Especially when we are successful or self-made, we come to rely on ourselves, not others, not God. However, as many of us know, our self-made security just doesn't last. And each of us, from the poorest to the richest, from the most accomplished to those who have accomplished little, each of us needs the shelter of God in the midst of a world of storms. The Midrash, a collection of writings from Jewish rabbis dating back even to the first century, claims that Psalm 91 was written by Moses after he built the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the portable dwelling place of God during the Israelites' desert wanderings. Before the Israelites reached the promised land, the tabernacle was the shelter where they sought God. Much later, even after the Israelites had arrived at the promised land and built a kingdom, David brought this psalm, Psalm 91, into his own book of Psalms, and it continued to play a role of guiding and comforting the people of Israel through times of hardship. This is because they knew that God was their true security. Today, we go through our own times of hardship. We have external forms of hardship. Maybe we lose a loved one, or there's dramatic changes in our world, job insecurity. And then we have internal ones, addictions, failures, self-caused suffering and loss. And whether we realize it or not, we seek shelter. We may find shelter in our jobs, our ability to be successful, our wealth, our popularity, but these things are all fragile, aren't they? You can get fired from a job. You can make a bad decision and squander your success. Markets can turn and wealth can disappear. 
and the allure of popularity may lead ultimately to loneliness. But the one who tasted death yet rose again calls us by name and invites us to the secret place, the shelter of his love. God's shelter is there for you and for me. And unlike all other promises of security and shelter, God's hiding place is sure. During Lent, many join in Jesus' own 40 days of trial in the desert by giving up things they enjoy or perhaps are a little bit too attached to. This might be television or desserts or video games or something else. The season of giving up can test us. We want to run back to the things we so often use to buffer ourselves from the world and the vulnerability of our own lives. But as we allow our usual habits to fall away, we might start to see more clearly our need for the shelter of God's love. We may start to understand why the psalmist calls God my refuge and my fortress, the one in whom I trust. So friends, may you during this Lenten season not shy away from the secret place, from finding shelter in the God who loves you. May you, like a child seeking their loving parent, run to the one who is our hiding place, our refuge. Amen.